Hello and welcome to this video for OCR A-Level Physics, where we're going to be looking at the topic of kinematics, which is in the module Forces of Motion and in the subtopic Motion. So in today's lesson, we're going to understand the concept of kinematics and look at the key, the key terms of kinematics. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define the terms speed, velocity, displacement and acceleration, understand the difference between instantaneous and average speed, and and then calculate values for speed, velocity, displacement and acceleration. So we're looking at the following part of the OCR A-Level Physics Specification 3.1.1 Kinematics, in particular displacement, instantaneous speed, average speed, velocity and acceleration. So kinematics is the study of motion of objects and there are several key terms used in kinematics to describe motion and they are displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. Now there is a clear difference between the distance travelled by an object and the object's displacement. Distance travelled is a scalar quantity, it's a measure of the total length you've moved in the journey, whilst displacement is a vector quantity and it's a measure of how, the, how, far, the, how far the straight line distance is from the starting position, so it's a measure of how far an object has travelled from its starting point in a given direction. Now both distance travelled and displacement are measured in metres, but displacement is symbolised with an S, whilst distance travelled is symbolised with a D. Now displacement can be expressed expressed in terms of a magnitude and a direction as it's a vector. So direction can be either given as a plus value or a negative value depending on the situation. So let's just clarify everything. Distance travelled is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity. Distance travelled is the actual path um, length of the uh, traversed by between the starting position and the finishing position, whilst displacement is the length of the shortest path between the starting and finishing positions. Distance travelled can never be a negative as it's a scalar quantity, whilst displacement can be a positive, negative or a zero value. And distance travelled depends upon the actual length of the path followed, but displacement is independent of the actual length of the path followed. Now speed is how fast an object is moving. Now speed does not involve direction, it is a scalar quantity. So the speed of a moving object is rarely constant. So when people walk, run or travel in a car, their speed is constantly changing. And the speed of which a person can walk, run or cycle can depend on many factors like your age, the terrain you're on, your fitness or the distance travelled. So there are many different examples of speeds calculated in the real world such as walking speed, running speed, cycling speed, the speed of a car, the speed of an aeroplane, the speed of the earth orbiting the sun. Now remember the speed of all objects rarely stays constant. The speed of an object is rarely the same throughout a journey. So this leads to two different concepts the average speed and the instantaneous speed. Now the average speed is the total distance covered by an object per the total time elapsed, whilst instantaneous speed is the speed of the object at any given point in the journey. So we can calculate speed with the following equation. Speed in meters per second, meters per second is equal to the distance travelled in meters divided by the time taken in seconds. Now speed is a scalar, it doesn't involve direction. Now this equation is, allows you to work out the average speed of an object. Now it's important to note that if we have a constant acceleration and an object is starting from rest, well then the final instantaneous speed is always double the average speed. This is because the average speed is the middle value of speed for the journey. So if we consider the start of the journey and the end of the journey, well the average speed is going to be in the dead middle between zero and the final speed. Now, the velocity of an object is its speed in a given direction. So velocity is a vector quantity and it's the rate of change in displacement of an object. So the velocity is the change in displacement over the change in time. And we can represent the direction an object moves in with a positive or negative sign. So we contrast this with speed, which is a scalar quantity. It's the rate of change in distance of an object. So speed is the change in distance traveled over the change in time. And speed does not have a direction, so it must always be a positive value. 
So if we focus on the equation that velocity is equal to the change in displacement over the change in time, we can symbolise this as delta s over delta t. Now remember with this equation, it is the equation for the average velocity of the object. So we can say that velocity is the speed of an object with a direction or the rate of change in displacement. Velocity is a vector quantity and we can illustrate velocity by either stating the direction of travel or with a positive or negative sign. Now if an object is moving in a circle then it can have a constant speed but it must have a change in velocity because velocity is the speed in a given direction. So if an object is moving in a circle it must be changing direction as shown in the figure on the screen. So this tells us that if it's changing direction it must be changing velocity so therefore the object is accelerating. Now acceleration is the rate of change in velocity for a moving object. Now as we said before, velocity has both a speed and a direction. So an acceleration is either a change in speed or a change in direction. An acceleration, like velocity, is a vector quantity. So we can calculate acceleration with the following equation. Acceleration in metres per second squared is equal to the change in velocity in metres per second over the time taken for the change in seconds. So we can say this is the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time taken. Now, as we know, an, uh, the acceleration is the rate of change in velocity for a moving object. So this tells us that velocity has a speed with a direction, so if you change speed, you accelerate. So if an object changes speed, it changes velocity, it is accelerating. And this requires a resultant force to do this. And this is the most commonly thought of method of acceleration. Now, in this context, a negative acceleration could be a decrease in the speed of the object. Now, velocity, as it has a speed and a direction, means that if you change direction, you are also accelerating. So if an object changes direction, it changes velocity, it is accelerating, this requires a resultant force. Now in this context, a negative acceleration could be the object moving in the opposite direction. Now you can only work out which one it actually is by looking at the information given to you in the question. Now as we said before, to produce either a change in speed or a change in direction, a resultant force is needed. So let's have a look at a few examples. Here, a car is speeding up as it leaves the town. The driver presses on the accelerator brake. This increases the car's velocity. It is accelerating. In this case, a car is setting off from traffic lights. There's an instance when the car is both stationary and accelerating. Otherwise, it would not start moving. In this diagram here, a car is travelling around a bend at a steady speed. The car's speed is constant, but its velocity is changing as it's changing direction, so it must be accelerating. In this image, a ball is being hit by a tennis racket. Both the ball's speed and the direction are changing, so the ball's velocity is changing, the ball is accelerating. And finally, in this instance, a stone is dropped over a cliff. Gravity makes the stone go faster and faster, so it's increasing its speed, the stone is accelerating as it falls. So that brings an end to our lesson today. We've looked at the concepts of displacement, instantaneous speed, average speed, velocity and acceleration. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can define the terms speed, velocity, displacement and acceleration. We can define the difference between instantaneous and average speed and calculate the values for speed, velocity and displacement. Thank you so much for watching this lesson on OCR A-Level Physics, where we've looked at the concept of kinematics in the subtopic of motion in the module Forces of Motion. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.